साधु 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 नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध means to the blessed one the worthy one the supremely enlightened one sadhu 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 okay now we're going to learn a beautiful sutta about buddha's enlightenment right we commemorate buddha's enlightenment during this month of may every year on a full moon we sak for a day full moon day buddha attained enlightenment because of buddha's enlightenment many people learned about the path to liberation path to nibbana path to freedom from suffering but for the first time in this world since buddha discovered this amazing path to end suffering buddha is called the discoverer of the path the knower of the path now we are going to learn about buddha's enlightenment and uh, do you remember buddha later Uh, explained the, about the Buddha's journey, journey to uh, enlightenment. Buddha uh, renounced the palace, the sense pleasures, by realizing that it was an extreme, one extreme in the world, karma sukalli karma yoga, gratifying the senses with pleasures. and this extreme does not lead to peace calm enlightenment and to nibbana it is not beneficial it leads to craving clinging attachment pain and suffering this extreme of the indulgence in sense pleasures right so buddha realized that as the bodhisattva buddha to be when he was 29 years old buddha renounced the palace and uh, became a truth seeker so there was nobody to teach the buddha about the path because nobody knew the path they were trying things they were doing experiments so when they were doing experiments without the help of a uh, of a awakened being most of them fell into the second extreme what is the second extreme Atta kilamata yoga. Atta kilamata yoga. Kilamata means torturing, torturing one's own body, self mortification. So Buddha also wanted to try that. Try that. Buddha did that, that experiment, and. tortured his body to an extreme level nobody else could do that the almost like fainted and fell on the ground his body was like a skeleton all the 32 great marks disappeared temporarily
it's still Buddha was in his 30s. Buddha to be Bodhisattva as the Bodhisattva. Finally, the Buddha to be realized that this is another extreme, just an extreme, and it doesn't take you anywhere. It is unbeneficial. It is base. It is. It leads to the. It does not lead to awakening. It does not lead to peace. It does not lead to any special knowledge. So avoiding these both extremes, Buddha realized the middle path. Middle path means a special term for the noble eightfold path. One by one, Buddha discovered all the eight factors of the Noble Eightfold Path without the help of a teacher. That is why we call the Buddha self-awakened one. So when Buddha was investigating the truth of life using the Noble Eightfold Path, Buddha was First, Buddha purified Buddha's bodily and verbal actions, which is sila, the first aggregate aspect of this Noble Eightfold Path. That includes right speech, right action and right livelihood. To achieve a noble virtue, the virtue leads that leads to the ending of suffering, first one has to practice uh, and, and establish in right view. That is why in the Noble Eightfold Path, right view comes first, samaditi, right understanding. So Buddha already had that understanding also based on thoughts of compassion thoughts of loving kindness thoughts of renunciation this precept should be followed so right view and right intention right thought are included in in the wisdom aspect of the noble eightfold path so based on these factors, Buddha developed Samadhi, concentration. That is how, and then uh, again, there are three factors. Fulfills the, the, the Samadhi aggregate, which is right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. Samadhi aggregate consists of these three factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. So Buddha di discovered these things for the first time in this era without the help of anyone else and developed all the factors of the Noble Eightfold Path and that enabled the Buddha to attain the first jhana, to develop the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, or the form jhanas, formless jhanas, the mind was very sharp, concentrate, concentrated, focused, pointed, why hindrances are gone, abandoned, eradicated, mind is very bright, clear and very active. Now the mind was um, very sharp and powerful to see the truth of this journey of sansara. So using that powerful concentration, Buddha was able to see the 
So the beginning of this life, Buddha wanted to see. What Buddha saw was, this is a beginning point, it is not discerned. Anamatagoyam bhikkave sansaru. Pubba koti napanyant. This sansar is so long, from life to life. Birth to birth, world to world, traveling, wandering, endless journey. The first point cannot be seen or discerned. Such a long, long journey. Every time. Being born, experiencing aging, sickness, death, separation from loved ones, crying, lamenting, experiencing great pain. And Buddha was able to see past lives. This concentration is so powerful that Buddha was able to see <clears throat> the mechanism behind this journey. Who sends beings to these different realms and worlds and lives? There is no external being who is responsible for this. The responsible factor is one's own actions. Buddha realized about karma. This is the knowledge of death and rebirth of beings, how beings are reborn and die according to their karma and how they experience pleasure and pain, how they are reborn in different places, how they begin their life, end their life, all these details were realized by the Buddha with the help of the second knowledge. At this point, Buddha realized the meaningless nature of this journey and how beings are deluded. Even though the journey is meaningless, people don't know about it. So they keep falling into this misery. Buddha had this limitless compassion. Compassion for his his life and compassion for others' lives. Buddha wanted to save his life, life from this endless suffering and Buddha wanted to help others save their lives from this endless suffering. That is why Buddha thought like this, mendicants or monks, before my awakening, when I was still unawakened but intent on awakening as a bodhisattva. Now still Buddha is sitting under that bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya in India sitting on the diamond throne and there is nobody around the Buddha not a single Brahma, a god, a human, non-human, nobody because at this time <clears throat> by that time Buddha already defeated the uh, the army of Mara, the evil one, and Buddha was meditating all alone. And now Buddha started doing the vipassana. Buddha's mind is already concentrated, so samatha is developed fully and very well, sharp concentration. And now this is how Buddha is doing the vipassana, understanding things as they really are, based on the dependent origination, paticca samuppada. So as a Bodhisattva, Buddha, Buddha later taught us what Buddha did sitting under the Bodhi tree. As a Bodhisattva, I thought, alas, this world has fallen into trouble. Beings are born, grow old, beings die, beings pass away, and beings are reborn. Yet, they don't understand how to escape from this suffering, from old age and death. 
Oh, when will an escape be found from the suffering headed by old age and death? That's the compassionate feeling arose in the Buddha's mind. And then Buddha teaches, then it occurred to me. Now it's still Buddha is not enlightened, right? When Buddha was thinking like this, Buddha was not yet enlightened. Buddha already gained two knowledges of out of triple knowledge. First one is knowledge to see past lives and the second one is knowledge to see uh, karma. How beings experience the results of their own karma and what is what kind of karma they uh, made in their past lives. Those two knowledges were realized and this is how Buddha is getting closer to the third knowledge. Knowledge of the Four Noble Truths. For that, Buddha used powerful insight, Vipassana. Then it occurred to me, when what exists is their old age and death. This is the problem of life. So Buddha started with the problem. The problem of this life is suffering, pain, aging, sickness, death. This is the suffering. When, what is the condition for old age and death? So basically, what, what is the reason for this, this suffering in life? No matter which part of the world you live in, no matter which belief you are having, no matter which religion you are following, regardless of all these ordinary boundaries, all beings experience the same thing. When somebody dies, a loved one dies, everybody has the same feeling, sadness, sorrow, lamentation. The Buddha is finding a solution for a universal problem. Then through rational application of mind. Due to the yonis of Manishikara, Ahupanyaya Abhisamim, I comprehended with wisdom. This is how Buddha using Vipassana knowledge. And Buddha realized with wisdom, using the yonis of Manishikara, wise consideration, Jati Pachya Jaramarana. When there is birth, there is suffering in life, headed by old age and death. Rebirth is a condition for old age and death. So it is not the fault of a of an external being why we suffer. When we suffer due to a natural disaster, due to a due to an accident, due to a sickness, due to old age, it's, it's not the act of an external person. The reason is birth. This is this is a very scientific way of understanding things as they really are. Cause and effect mechanism. Paticca Samuppad. So now Buddha uh, found the most difficult answer in the world. Why are we suffering? Now, instead of using an author and questioning from the point of an author, instead of um, author asking a question, Buddha using a cause and effect. Here, the cause is birth, effect is suffering. That is how Buddha teaches, that is how we should 
uh, we are going to be able to find answers for the questions. Not with the notion of a self or an author or a doer. No. But as a cause and effect. Then it occurred to me. When what exists is their birth. Using the wise consideration, using the powerful insight, Buddha comprehended with wisdom. When arranging of karma exists, there is birth. So what is the reason for birth? Bhava, Bhava Pachya Jantu. Very clearly Buddha realized karma. Karma is creating the birth. One by one, answers are coming. Then Buddha, uh, Buddha to be com contemplating continuously. Why, why is there this karma arranging? Why can't we stop karma? Where is the end of karma arranging? Because as long as karma is arranged, there will be a rebirth in any, any form of realm. In the realm of hell, in the realm of animals, in the realm of ghostly beings, in the realm of heavenly beings, in the realm of Brahmas, in the realm of humans. There is no end. Keeps going, keeps going. It's like, karma is like fuel. You need fuel for your vehicle, right? If you have fuel and other necessary things, then the vehicle continues. Right? So, karma is the major cause of this, uh, of this existence. So now Buddha wanted to uh, investigate what is behind this karma. When what exists is their karma arrangement. What is the condition for bhava? Buddha realized with developed wisdom, with insight, upadana, clinging. When clinging exists, there is arranging of karma. It's a cause. The cause here is clinging, father, and the effect is karma. It's not a person who is responsible. It's a cause. That is very important to understand if one needs to uh, find a solution to stop this cycle. Like that, Buddha kept investigating to find the cause uh, behind the clinging. When what exists is their clinging. What is the condition for clinging? Craving. Yeah, Buddha realized craving is the cause. When craving exists, there is clinging. So that realized very clearly, craving is sixfold. Craving for visual objects, forms, craving for sounds, craving for smells, craving for tastes, craving for tangibles, and craving for mind objects or thoughts. Buddha kept investigating 
what is the cause of craving when what exists is their craving that teaches then through rational application of mind using wise consideration i comprehend that with wisdom when feeling exists there is craving feeling is the condition for craving right like that buddha investigated what is the cause of feeling when what exists is their feeling buddha realized when contact exists feeling exists contact is the condition for feeling Again, Buddha contemplated on the cause of contact. When what exists, contact is their contact. What is the condition for contact? Buddha realized with insight. The six sense fields, six sense faculties, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. When these six sense bases exist, what, what exists? Contact exists. Then Buddha wanted to understand the cause behind six sense bases. Then Buddha realized Nama Rupa is the cause. When Nama Rupa exists, six sense bases exist. Then Buddha investigated what is the cause of mentality and materiality, Nama Rupa. When there is consciousness, there is the mentality and materiality. When consciousness exists, There is mentality and materiality. What is the cause of consciousness? Sankhara. Formations are the cause of consciousness. Formations give rise to consciousness. When formations exist, Sankhara exists, there is consciousness. What is the cause of consciousness? The Sankhara, Buddha realized with wisdom, when avijja, not realizing the Four Noble Truths, lack of knowledge of the Four Noble Truths, when it exists, then there are formations. Formations exist. Lack of the knowledge, true knowledge, is the condition for formations. And then Buddha realized the, that is how this entire mass of suffering originates. When there is avijja, not realizing the Four Noble Truths, lack of knowledge of the true knowledge, Sankhara exists. When Sankhara exists, Vijnana exists. When Vijnana exists, Namarupa exists. When Namarupa exists, six sense bases exist. When six, six sense bases exist, contact exists. When contact exists, feeling exists. When feeling exists, Craving exists. When craving exists, clinging exists. When clinging exists, arranging of karma exists. When arranging of karma exists, birth exists. When birth exists, suffering exists.
then Buddha realized this is what I was searching for eons and eons, eons and eons. In many of my previous lives, I failed. I couldn't find the answer, but in this final life, I realized origination, origination. This is how the suffering originates. This is how suffering ar arises. These are the, all the causes that lead to suffering. All the causes. Such was the vision, knowledge, wisdom, realization, and light that arose in me regarding teachings not learned before from another, not heard from anyone else. Self awakened, right? And then again, Buddha wanted to. Uh, now, Buddha realized okay, if things arise like this, if suffering arises like this, now I can find a way out. Once you realize the cause for the problem, now you know how to fix it. Now the fixing part. Then it occurred to me. When what does not exist, is there no old age and death? And Buddha realized with wisdom. I comprehended with wisdom. When birth doesn't exist, there is no old age and death. This is the permanent solution. Birth should be ceased. Birth is nothing else, uh, just an effect of so many causes. No need to think, oh, if birth doesn't exist, what will happen to me? What will happen to my life? So I am not going to continue. No, that's the, that's the misunderstanding of a, of, a, of a self which does not exist. But if you, if somebody contemplate this life in the light of dependent origination, cause and effect mechanism, you will realize there are some causes and there are some effects. When the causes cease, effects cease. There is no me, I am, or myself. So, the problem is the suffering. Cause is the birth. When birth, is, birth ceases, suffering ceases. That's all. That's going to happen. When birth ceases, all day, the suffering headed by all age and death cease. But it's very difficult to achieve that solution. It's because the cause for birth should be ceased. That Buddha contemplated. When what does not exist, is there no birth? When bhava, arranging of karma, does not exist, there will be no birth. Like that, Buddha realized the cessation of dependent origination one by one. When clinging doesn't exist, bhava does not exist, arranging of karma does not exist. When craving does not exist, Thinking does not exist, when feeling does not exist, craving does not exist, when contact does not exist, feeling does not exist, when six sense bases do not exist, contact does not exist, when mentality and materiality don't exist, six sense bases don't exist, when consciousness doesn't exist, mentality and materiality don't exist. When Sankhara formations do not exist, consciousness does not exist. When ignorance does not exist, Sankhara does not exist. In order for the ignorance to cease, one should gain the full realization of the Four Noble Truths. Because Vijja is the opposite of Avijja. 
true knowledge is the opposite of ignorance. True, true knowledge means here the full realization of the Four Noble Truths. So that realization leads to the cessation of formations, formations, <coughs> cessation of formations leads to the cessation of consciousness. With the cessation of consciousness, mentality and materiality ceases. Mental, with the cessation of mentality and materiality, six sense bases cease. With the cessation of six sense bases, contact ceases. With the cessation of contact, feeling ceases. With the cessation of feeling, craving ceases. With the cessation of craving, clinging ceases. With the cessation of clinging, arranging of karma ceases. When, with the cessation of arranging of karma, birth ceases. With the cessation of birth, jati nirodha. Jara, Marana, Soka, Parideva, Dukkha, Domana, Sophayas, and Mirujanti. That is how this entire mass of suffering ceases, ends. Nirodho, Nirodho, Ti, Me Bhikkavi, Chakkum Udapadi, Jnanam Udapadi, Panya Udapadi, Vijja Udapadi, Aloko Udapadi. This is how suffering ceases. This is how suffering ceases. I realized it for the first time in the world. Such was the vision, knowledge, wisdom, realization, and light that arose in me regarding teachings not learned, not heard before from one another. After realizing, the cause and effect mechanism and everything. In a different sutta, Buddha teaches, Buddha started contemplating on the five aggregates of clinging, practicing sharp vipassana. And not long after that contemplation of the impermanence of five aggregates of clinging, it said that Buddha attained enlightenment, gaining the, the knowledge of the destruction of all the taints, and, and now the triple knowledge was attained at the same time Buddha attained. Buddha became the self-awakened Gautama Buddha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So that is the enlightenment of the Buddha and that is how Buddha found the concrete answer to end suffering. When Buddha was 35 years old, this amazing thing happened. Then after the enlightenment, Buddha lived for 45 years, another 45 years, spreading this wisdom, sharing this wisdom with others out of Limitless compassion. Buddha didn't expect anything from the world. Buddha didn't need anything from the world because Buddha was not going to reborn again and that was Buddha's final life. So Buddha didn't need anything. Buddha already ended the cycle. So it's through limitless compassion. Buddha shared the teachings of wisdom with Brahmas, gods, humans, and with, with the beings who have this accumulated merit to grasp the truth. So many people use those te teachings. It's already escaped from suffering, already ended the cycle. And many people uh, are still practicing it. So Buddha attained final passing away 2,568 years ago. That's why we call it today. This uh, the last uh, the the twenty third of May. Was the Buddhist year 
2568 means it's from the passing away of the Buddha, or final Paranibbana. The Buddhist uh, year started after the passing away of the Buddha. And if you add 45 years to that, then you can understand, you can learn, you can get the year where Buddha attained enlightenment. If you add 35 more years, then you get the Buddha's birth year. That's how you understand this happened about 2,500 years ago in India. And now India is divided into many parts. So some of the places that before belonged to India now the birthplace of the Buddha now, that area is called Lumb Lumbini. That now it, it's now the country is called Nepal. Other parts, uh, all the other holy sites uh, related to the life of the Buddha is still in, inside India. So this is what we commemorate as, as the enlightenment of the Buddha. And we, we offer the Amisa Puja, the offering of gifts to the Buddha, Vesak decorations, flags, flowers, sweet incense, and we also offer the Patipatti Puja. We, we, we are grateful and we show our gratitude towards the Buddha by practicing five precepts, eight precepts, meditation. We practice lots of giving, generosity, helping others. So in order to uh, make that offering of practice to the Buddha. Okay, so do you have any questions? So this is from the Gautama Sutta, right? This is the name of the Sutta, the Buddha's name, because this entire Sutta is about how would that in enlightenment, the, the wise consideration of the Buddha that led to the final liberation. And this is from the Connected Discourses, Sanghita Nikaya, Sutta number 12.10. Uh, but my question has to do with the 10 armies, uh, the Mara armies. Can you list each one? Because these are all defilements that we have to overcome. Okay, let, let me let me show everybody how to find the list of armies, okay? Here. Okay, let's try. So can we go to collection of minor discourses? We go to minor collection. And then we go to Suttanipada, anthology of discourses. And then... Okay, can you see the Padana Sutta on the screen? So this is in the Sutta Nipata. Minor discourse, Mahavagga, Sutta Nipata, Sutta number 3.2. This is actually really like another beautiful Sutta that everybody should, should know and read so can can we read it together this is the entire sotanipati is in his stanzas that's why you see here uh, it's like a verse right set of verses okay can it, so like this you you feel like you are li you are listening um, to the direct words like of the buddha and buddha is speaking to you is is you feel mm -hmm. so real and like um, very alive 
Now Buddha ex explains about what happened that night when there was nobody. Uh, mm -hmm. Buddha was fighting with the Mara uh, by himself. And th this is the conversation that took place. During my time of resolute striving, back on the bank of River Niranjana River, I was meditating very hard for the sake of finding sanctuary from the yoke. Namuchi approached, speaking words of kindness. You're thin, discolored, on the verge of death. Death has a thousand parts of you. One fraction is left to life. Liver, sir, life is better. Living, you can make merits. While leading the spiritual life and serving the sacred flame, you can pile up abundant merit. So what will striving do for you? Hard to walk is the path of striving. Hard to do, a hard challenge to win. These are the verses Mara spoke as he stood beside the Buddha. When Mara spoke in this way, the Buddha said this, O wicked one, kins kinsman of the negligent, you're here for your own purpose. I have no need for the slightest bit of merit. Those with need for merit are fit for Mara to address. I have faith and energy too, and wisdom is found in me. When I am so resolute, why do you beg me to live? The rivers and streams might be dried by the wind. So why, when I am resolute, should it not dry up my blood? And while the blood is drying up, the bile and pilgrim dry too. And as my muscles waste away, my mind grows more serene. And all the stronger grow mindfulness and wisdom and immersion. As I meditate like this, having attained the supreme feeling, my mind has no interest in sensual pleasures. Behold a being's purity. Sensual pleasures are your first army. The second is called discontent. Hunger and thirst are the third. The fourth is said to be craving. The fifth is dullness and drowsiness. The sixth is said to be cowardice. Your seventh is doubt. Contempt and obstinacy are your eighth. Profit, praise, and honor, and misbegotten fame. The extolling of oneself while scorning others. This is your army, Namuchi. The strike force of the Dark One. Only a hero can defeat it. But in victory, there lies bliss. Let me gird myself, so what if I die? I'd rather die in battle than live on in defeat. Here, some ascetics and Brahmins are swallowed up, not to be seen again, and they do not know the path traveled by those true to their vows. Seeing Mara, ready on his mount, surrounded by his banners, band, bannered forces, I shall meet them in battle. They'll never make me retreat. That army of yours has never been beaten by the world with all its gods. Yet I shall smash it with wisdom, like an unfired pot with a stone. Having brought my thoughts under control and established mindfulness well, I shall wander from country to country, guiding many disciples. Diligent and resolute, following my instructions, they will proceed despite your will to where there is no sorrow. For seven years I followed, step by step behind the Blessed One. I found no vulnerability in the mindful awakened one. A crow once circled a stone that looked like a lump of fat. Perhaps I'll find something tender in thought. Perhaps there's something tasty. But finding nothing tasty, the crow left that place. Like the crow that pecked the stone, I leave Gautama disappointed. 
so stricken with sorrow that his heart drooped from his armpit. That spirit downcast vanished right there. Are there any suttas or any more uh, details on the how the Blessed One defines ignorance? Uh, one of the suttas is Satcha Vibhanga Sutta, the exposition of the Four Noble Truths. Okay, you go to... Can you see the Sutta Central? So we go to collection of middle discourses, Manjima Nikaya. We go to the final 50. You go to the chapter on analysis. And then you go... Um, Go to the Sutta analysis of the truths, such a Vibhanga Sutta. This is the truth. This is the Sutta. Okay. Majjhimanika Sutta number one forty one. Now, Bante, uh, I I'm just really wondering. I know that Buddha um um talks about the main reason of suffering is rebirth. Okay. Now, of course, um uh, um Buddha was able to enlighten and and. And, and, and share with us all of this wisdom uh, during the time when the um, uh, human world has all of these people, okay, coming back again and again because of clinging or craving and others. So, um, but, but Bhante, how did, how did it all start with human world? So what, what I meant is... Uh, how did it all start? So why did why knowing that there's suffering here in human world and how did the nature come out with humans coming in and then creating this karma and everything? So uh, I hope Bante, you don't mind if I ask um, if I mention about when we were young, we were all told that uh, uh, God created the world and said, "Go forth and multiply." So. Why is it that uh, go forth and multiply and then human beings are born he here in this human world and have all of this suffering? Um, and what would be the cycle next, Bante? So I'm, I'm just wondering myself, wh why is it that what, this is the design? What would, be, what would be the cycle next? No, no difference, same cycle. So, so does it mean that uh, the human world will one day vanish or so if it vanish then come a time no, the, and then the, it will the, come the back existence the realm of humans not only the realm of humans realm of hells realm of animals they will not disappear they, they will not cease to exist only the earth will disappear this earth will disappear one day. The earth will completely engulf in fire and it completely explodes and start burning. It's, first it gets very hot and hot and uh, then it burns and ceases to exist. But on this earth, right? And But there are other planets, galaxies, universe, so many other worlds. So beings will always have a place to exist. It's not that it's not the life cease to exist. It's, it's just this physical environment will will uh, no longer exist for some time, but then it will come back. It will come back. It will start. The earth will reformed by itself again and that from different worlds the humans start again coming to this human world the, the coming means they are they get reborn here so it, it, it's again, a never-ending cycle and it is the cycles again and again uh, it, it's a natural law the cycle will continue regardless of um 
the appearance of the Buddha, only very few people will will find the way to stop the cycle and escape from it and uh, attain liberation. But the majority will continue the journey. So and what is the design. reason for the continuous continued existence? The reason is not realizing the four noble truths. So, if an animal has the not has the lack of knowledge of the four noble truths, the animal will continue. If a if a hell being has the lack of knowledge of the four noble truths, the hell being will continue. If a ghost has the lack of knowledge of the four noble truths, the ghost will continue. If a god or god does have the uh, lack of knowledge of the four noble truths, will continue. If a human being has the lack of knowledge of the four noble truths, the human being will continue. That's how. Thank you, thank you, Bhante. It's an endless journey, unless you end it, unless you achieve the end of it. It's an endless journey. Yes, Bhante, because uh, really when we were small, we were taught that supreme being, the creator, accordingly. Yeah, uh, it's not not only we up, were yeah. taught, not only we were taught when we Go were kids, even, even the Buddha to be were to was taught like that. When he was at his palace, uh, before he attained enlightenment, that is that was one of the doctrines taught to people. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not a new thing. Old birth. All it's not birth, a new coming back, coming back, rebirth, and all suffering. Yeah, that's only one of the weaves. There are so many other weaves. Some people believe this. There is no nobody created this. This is the natural happening incident, and then with death, everything annihilates. Nothing will remain. The the parts of the body, the solid parts will go to the earth, liquid parts will go to the water, uh, the air and heat will connect with the nature, and that's it. There is no karma, no good karma, no bad karma, no merit, no demerit, nothing. When, when the life ends, everything ends. So no need to worry about avoiding bad, no need to worry about keeping precepts. So just have fun, entertain, your life to the max and that's that was one of the teachings at that time. Another teaching was that uh, the a su supreme being created this. This is not a new new weave. It is always in the world. It's very old. The new thing is this Thing, the real which is realized by the Buddha. This is the new thing that this is not a creation of a superior being. This is not a natural uh, incident. The life does not end at death. The reason for this continuous journey is not realizing four truths. Those are the four noble truths. This is a new thing to the world. All the other views, opinions, doctrines are very, very old. They are always there, except the Four Noble Truths, except the solution of Nibbana, okay? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.